God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots and a dead dog, <laughs> being a good kissing carrion. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Conception is a blessing, but as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. How say you by that? Still harping on my daughter, yet he not knew me at first. He said I was a fishmonger. He is far, far gone. And truly in my youth I suffered much extremity for love very near this. I'll speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit. Together with most weak hands, all which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honest, not honesty to have it thus said that. For yourself, sir, should be old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. Will you walk me out of my air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are, a happiness that often madness hits on. Which reason and sanity could not so prosperously be delivered of? I will leave him and suddenly carive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life, except my life, except my life. Fare you well, my lord. It's tedious, old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. God save you, sir. My honored lord. My dearest lord. My excellent good friends, how dost thou go concern? Ah, oh, Rosencrantz, how do you both? As indifferent as the children of the earth. Happy that we are not unhappy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very button. Nor the soles of her shoes? Neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist, or in the middle of her favors? Faith, her privates we. In the secret parts of fortune? Oh, most true, she is a strumpet. What news? None, my lord. The world's grown honest. Then is doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. With have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Then is the world one? A goodly one, with many confines, wards, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why then, tis none to you, for there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me it is a prison. Why then, your ambition makes it one, tis too narrow for your mind. O oh God, I could be bounced in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space, were it not that I have bad dreams. Which dreams indeed are ambition, for the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. <laughs> Truly, and I hold ambition of so airy and light quality that it is but a shadow's shadow. Then are our beggars bodies, and our monarchs and outstretched heroes the beggars shadows? Shall we to the court? For by my fay I cannot reason. We'll wait upon you. No such matter. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants, for to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Bigger that I am, I am even poor in thanks. But I thank you, and sure, my dear friends, my thanks are too dear a halfpenny. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, come, deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? <laughs> Anything but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks, which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. 
To what end, my lord? That you must teach me, but let me conjure you, by the rights of our fellowship, by the consonancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, and by what more dear and better prosper could charge you withal, be even and direct with me, whether you were sent or no. What say you? Nay, then I have an eye for you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. Lying. Why? why you always lying? I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery, and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no feather. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air. Look you. This brave overhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form of moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there is no such stuff in my thoughts. Why do you laugh then, if man not delights me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. Souls. <laughs>